Okay, so half a year ago we got 300,000 euro for this award and we got a big empty building. So uh, we started working on Precious Plastic version 4 and this video is halfway. So we're now six months in with a lot of people from around the world and this is just to give you guys an overview of where we are at right now. Be warned, it's going to be quite a lengthy video. There's so much stuff going on, so many people, it's all interesting. We tried to narrow it down, but it's just going to be long. So get yourself some popcorn. Start off in a workspace where a lot of stuff is being developed. New tools, machines, basically the, the core of precious plastic. My name's Tim. <coughs> what have I been working on? In the few words, developing mold techniques. I've been making beams finding new ways of making beams. And we've also been looking at much bigger molds to use. And one test we did for that was making a, a big skateboard, or it's a normal sized skateboard, but the mold is very big. Hi, my name is Mark. I just have good tools. I'm here to further develop the sheet press that I've designed before and make sure it fits into the precious plastic V4. So the main thing I'm improving here is um, making sure we can make bigger sheets. We want bigger sheets to make bigger products, so we need a bigger machine. My name is Friedrich. I'm here to build a better, improved version of the shredder and make it be more productive. I came up to a solution that it might be useful to have an automatic pusher for um, moving the material so the operator is more safe in the end and doesn't need to interact with the shredder with his hands. and. Um, is more, more safe in this way. And the pusher also makes it more efficient in the end. Uh, my name is Luis. And I started to work on washing plastic, the whole topic of how to get clean plastic and how to work with plastic in the context of water. So uh, the last monthly news, we already covered quite a bit about how the process works. Washing is very important because plastic can be uh, really dirty. Everything is packed in plastic and we want to work with post-consumer plastic. So we somehow need to be able to get a plastic which is clean because if it's not clean, it won't melt properly together. It will be uh, not really handleable for us. So my name is uh, Jan. So my main task is to develop a system for recycling PET bottles. So I say the PET is, is quite uh, well recycled plastic in an industrial way, but still there is no basic tools or low-tech system that allow people to recycle it in a local scale and so that's, that's why for me it's important. So the system uh, I developed yet is a small cutter that allows to cut the bottles into stripes and with these stripes you can then work on for making weave, ropes, using it to sew stuff. And, yeah. My name is Carolina. Well my task here is to find solution for styrofoam it's only 90% air and only 10% polystyrene. So it's very expensive for the companies to recycle this type of waste, to transport and move the material from one place to another. Basically this month, I started like, trying uh, how the machines work with styrofoam, the precious plastic machines, uh, the extrusion machine, the injection machine. I, I decided to build a whole new shredder that's especially for this type of waste uh, because Obviously, the, the, shred, the precious plastic shredder don't work with that. Um, I start prototyping uh, with a in a very rough and cheap way uh, the first shredder, uh, only with some PVC and some screws. And then I started like making the new the new shredder that was going to be more reliable on time. Um, yeah. My name is Janis. We are trying to make objects and materials to reduce the use of single-use plastics. So in the beginning we did a lot of research into different waste streams and different materials that are already out there. Um, then we developed those into um, two materials that we tried out so far, which are wheat bran and potato peels. And we chose to make plates from those because we think in the food industry there are a lot of uh, single-use plastic objects that we really want to get rid of, so we want to build alternatives for those. Uh, I want to do the Charlotte move, but I don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't know how it moves. Hey. My name is Bradford. So I was tasked with building a system to 
sort plastic using robotics. I went home after my visa ran out, and then uh, I was able to come back once it uh, renewed. So I was also able to find another robotics guy. This guy. <laughs> so we doubled. So one of the most expensive parts of plastic recycling these days is separating the plastic. Now you can manually sort with uh, lots of time and energy, or you can buy a big fancy machine to, uh, to automatically sort plastic, but we're looking at in-between solutions or ways to assist the manual sorting methods. So far, we went and found a robot, uh, purchased it, brought it in, and we started communicating with the robot using open source frameworks so we can send the robot a position and, um, and the robot will go to it and pick up a piece of plastic there. So now we need to start doing image analysis and recognition so the robot gets more knowledge on the, the environment and can actually go pick something up without us telling the robot where it is. Okay, so on the one hand, we're developing all these machines and tools, um, but we also want to make sure that once you build these machines yourself, that you can actually sustain yourself financially in the long run, that plastic recycling actually becomes your job. So we're looking into this whole pressure plastic network and the business models behind it. My name is Joseph Klatt. I'm the business guy. Money, 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 money. So we are putting a lot of focus into the business components of version four. Uh, we're doing that because we think it's kind of a missing link uh, from precious plastic in the past. So how do you really make a financially sustainable small business using the precious plastic methods? Money. So far I've worked on the Precious Plastic Bazaar. I've also been working on um, creating our starter kits, which are going to be a big version, a part of version 4. So the starter kits are kind of formatted like a business in a box, so you can fulfill different roles within the Precious Plastic Network. And with each uh, role comes a uh, detailed set of instructions, videos, resources for helping getting started and making a small business with this uh, role. So we're really diving into, okay, so I'm going to be become a sheet press uh, workspace. What are the numbers behind that? So how many sheets do I need to sell per month? What's the investment cost look like? And then how do I plan my business model more generally? Who are my customers? What are my sales channels? Who are the people that I'm collaborating to help me be successful? And these, all these different tools are what we hope that will help uh, kickstart people to really make a financially sustainable small business uh, from version four. Business is good, numbers are looking up just off the uh, top of my head. So we have over 350 workspaces around the world. We have over 250 machine builders. We have 10,000 people who want to say, who say they want to get started with precious plastic. We have 70,000 users on the forums. We have over 20,000 euros in transaction volume per month on the bazaar, and we are growing every day. So tile, tile, plastic, plastic, plastic recycled, plastic waste, no money, 15.95, okay, 14.50, okay, 12.50, 12.50, nice, shiny, perfect tile, thank you. <laughs> Yo, you have to come back. Oh. I'm uh, Thomas. So I try to help a bit in general management and I like to do product design also. I'm actually trying to make this product happen as also a future project, uh, which would be really interesting for a lot of people around the world maybe to start producing this as well. Hello, my name is uh, Simon Brinksma. Um, I am working on the business part of Precious Plastic. We can see on the map that a lot of people want to get started with Precious Plastic, but we also realize um, getting started with Precious Plastic is a lot. It's very overwhelming. And um, we believe that if we can give people the tools to really brainstorm through that whole process, then um, people will come up with a much, much more well thought through plan and they will also be able to get started more easily. Um, in the last few months uh, we've been working on creating tools that people can use if they want to get started to really think through their plan to make sure that they con they've considered everything and that when they will go to for example someone that would invest uh, in their, um, their plans that they show that they really figured it out. Hi, I am Sam, I'm working on a collection system. 
collecting plastic is really important because that's the first step when uh, setting up a workspace. Uh, making the machines and designing products is really cool, but eventually there needs to be plastic as well. So the 6th of April we have this collection event. Uh, bring your plastic, we give you food and drinks and a tour as well. Uh, so if you're out there, please come by on the 6th of April. So on the one hand we have this whole physical world with machines and business models, people recycling plastic. But a big part of the project is also our online world, where people actually meet each other, start collaborating, where they download everything, where they can share knowledge about the things they learned. And that is also a crucial element of the project. So we're also sort of reinventing that whole area. Uh, my name is Benjamin, and uh, I'm uh, one of the maintainers of the open source project called One Army. So we are building a platform that will contain uh, different functionalities and sections. The first one will be the discussion section, which is more a forum. Um, another section would be the how-to, where you can share a technique you master. Um, there also will be the map, where you can put a pin on your, where your workspace is and um, where you are doing your, your activity. There also will be an event page where you can create an event uh, to not only meet online but also meet offline. So we built the platform using uh, React, style component Firebase. Um, and I don't remember what else. <laughs> My name is Nico. So yeah, I'm working on the user interface for the platform. Uh, for One Army, which we already talked a lot uh, last month, and also on build.onearmy.world. Uh, but I'm also work working on branding and graphic stuff uh, for One Army, for stuff we're going to be way bigger than just the platform, but I can't really talk about that right now. Uh, my name is Mariska. I uh, work here as an illustrator for everything that's web-based and uh, hand-drawn. Um, well, Precious Plastic works a lot with pictures, but sometimes we don't have everything yet because it's constantly a uh, work in progress and the project is uh, constantly evolving. Um, and then it's great to have an uh, illustrative medium to share what we're doing with the people. Uh, and it also makes it um, way more human and way more uh, personal so that um, the people actually feel that there are people working for Precious Plastic and it's not just another company, that we're actually real human beings. Now, besides developing these online and offline tools, we also need to make sure everyone in this building can actually work and develop this project. So we have quite a few facilitating roles as well, people that make sure others can do their work making sure we have food on the table, uh, we have the materials in the house, that we have a place to sleep. So these are sort of the backbone of the project. My name is Kathy and I'm cooking here. Every day I'm super excited because we're not, we're not just uh, yeah, recreating recipes. We try to create recipes from what we have. And we don't have like a lot of variety to choose from because yeah, we try to keep the kitchen very sustainable and like we don't have access to every food we would like to but it's great to cook and to like to get a final result result very good with what we have so every day is is very exciting to me well today was a special day because we have a food processor <laughs> And yeah, we were looking for using that machine, so we start cooking burgers out of mung beans. When we start dancing and singing in the kitchen, like it's like an explosion of good energy towards the food. And yeah, it's a very special moment. Let me go, please. You're torturing me. <laughs> Hey, I'm Taylor. I am in charge of all of the food ordering and purchasing for Precious Plastic Kitchen, as well as dealing with all of our waste in-house. Uh, my favorite part of the routine is going to all the local markets and farms in the area and being able to connect with all of those people that are supplying us our food. I brought my dog, Stanley, from Canada. Here, sit. Come here, sit. <laughs> You're not. Come on, it's this. 
As of right now, we are eating 80% organic and 20% uh, non-certified organic, 60% fresh diet, 40% dry goods diet. And within those dry goods um, and fresh goods collectively, 25% of all of our produce is actually from Holland. We have the power to make the, a better choice so we can choose to have food that's not wrapped in plastic. We can have food that's from a closer distance from a local farm um, that creates less greenhouse gas emissions and a smaller footprint. 25% of our food uh, comes from Holland. Uh, and then our second leading country is from China, which is with 10%. And then our third country where we get most of our food is Turkey. So with all of the data that I've been slowly collecting um, as a community, we have decided to make a few changes with our future ordering. Um, one of those being um, black quinoa, seeing as how it's traveled 10,000 kilometers to be here, um, we're now no longer going to order that. My name is Jason. Yeah, so while I'm here, I'm developing a, a sheet pressing system. Um, I'm taking responsibility for the development of the oven, which will be used to heat the molds which go into the sheet press. Um, the reason we're developing an oven is because you can't, uh, you can't buy a, a commercial oven big enough to heat the molds of the sheets uh, for the size that we're, we're aiming for. Um, also, during the week while I'm here, one, at least once a week, we go dumpster diving. Um, so there's a team of us. We, uh, we cycle to this big factory uh, just outside of the city, um, which we find food waste, which is still perfectly edible, and then we bring it back um, so that people have food to eat while they work. Why, why I find dumpster diving important is because it's, it's, it's waste. If we don't eat this food, it's either going to go to landfill or it's going to be burnt. Um, so we're basically getting free energy to fuel our work from something that just comes out of the system. It's such a shame because this stuff gets produced, CO2 goes into making this food, it gets wrapped in plastic uh, just to end up in a bin or in a landfill. So we think, why not use that? It's still perfectly edible, little healthy. So like we found smoothies, fruits and vegetables, cheese, which isn't vegan, <gasps> but it's better that we we get it from the waste instead of paying money at a supermarket because that encourages it to be produced. Hello, my name is Tirsa and I'm a coordinator. Okay, so when, uh, when we arrived there was only a clear uh, empty workspace and we figured, well, this is a nice place to sleep, it's big enough. And then the fire department came and they said, nah, not gonna work. So there were houses on the list of being demolished, so we could save eight houses uh, and we got them from the, the municipality of Eindhoven. Well, one is very neat with a wooden floor and then uh, fresh flowers on the tables, like um, clean sheets, smells like uh, fresh, fresh food. And the other is a little bit less, depends a bit. I think one house, it resembles the artistic um, mindset of the inhabitants. Uh, so the walls are all uh, uh, drawn with paint and, and crayons and uh, whatever hands you could. <laughs> uh, my name is Sarah. I'm taking all the pictures about the team, taking video, helping in the kitchen, stay in the kitchen, clean the kitchen, clean everywhere, organize, making people feel comfortable, uh, hugging everybody so they feel like love, keep the space organized, bossing around, uh, jumping around, laughing around. I don't know what I'm doing as well. It's a little bit grey, this place, and outside is really depressing sometimes. So I think if we, if we show to everybody that you can feel more happy, like they, they feel happy as well and they give you back the love. It's, it's nice. I'm doing I'm thinking care. I'm the mom of everybody. Yeah. They feel loved. What are you guys doing? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You're making it easy. <laughs> I hate you guys. And I'm pushing from the Stop it! <laughs> Done. I got my Polaroid. Oh. My name is Gisela. I'm the coordinator of Precious Plastic here in Eindhoven. I, I'm like, I'm the person of reference for the newcomers and I'm kind of trying to solve all the, all the problems that they could have while they are coming to Eindhoven or while they are, they are here. And on the other side, I'm trying to fix a new system to control the finances. Because we were in a kind of analog system until yeah, a couple of weeks. So now we are trying to digitalize it. I'm Vicente. I'm a product designer, but sometimes uh, I'm also helping in the 
monthly news and uh, behind the camera. Every month we gather and uh, together we compile uh, what's been done this month and uh, what are the goals ahead. It's always, it's always a new challenge. Every month it's a new idea. We have to do it and that's the way we approach it. <laughs> Okay, so besides all this version 4 stuff that is going on, we also have a few side projects. Projects that are some related to plastic, some not, but I would say quite crucial for the future development of this whole community or project. Uh, hello, I'm Mattia and here I am taking care of all the digital uh, side of the project. We've been just recently in the Maldives where we set up a pilot there uh, to train local kids how to work with plastic. And we also sent a lot of the guys in here to do presentations, to share the message of precious plastic to the world. And now in the near future, we're gonna be making this collaboration uh, in Berlin, where we're gonna be making recycled caps uh, from plastic bags, there you go. And, and many more coming that, that, that I can't talk about yet. Well, I think we are now half the way through and, and it's kind of a big step and it really brings it really shows how time is not endless and one year seemed to be a lot of time and instead it's not, well, it's already out the way through and we have to work harder and harder in the next six months if we want to achieve all that we set out to do in September. So I am both scared and super excited to, and committed to really put in as much time and energies into this so that we can uh, get to November, get to October and, and be ready with both Precious Plastic and One Army. Uh, I'm Alicia and I work on the textile project, not on plastics, but this is going to be a sister project next to Precious Plastic. Uh, like textiles is also now a disposable product. Um, so I think more we need to change this mentality that uh, we need to endure the lifeline of a garment. So how can you give people tools with that? That's more the project I'm working on now. So I have three headlines in the project. And so in repair, uh, that's repair, upgrade, and um, uh, creating. And then in the repairments you have, uh, for instance, uh, fixing holes. In the upgrading part, you have the recombining from clothing or natural dyeing. And in the creating part, it's really from getting, starting from scratch with old clothing to a new one. I'm Katharina and I am preparing ourselves for Project Camp. So yeah. first we share, shared our plan and um, got in touch with a lot of people and um, prepared, researched on properties and then uh, had a quick look in Portugal um, how it kind of works to get a feeling for it. Now we are making a proper plan and uh, preparing for the next uh, visit and um, in April now we are going to uh, go to Portugal for a month really looking at all the properties visiting communities architects um, municipalities and other people we can learn from um, to then get hopefully get a, a good overview of where, where we can go and uh, where we want to go it's gonna be awesome <laughs> okay I know that was quite a lot and to be fair not even everyone is in this video we have more people here working every day to uh, bring version 4 to life um, I want to share one thing uh, it's more a bit of numbers and the money we spent so far so we started off having 300,000 euro we're now halfway and we actually also sort of uh, burned half of the money um, you can see where most of it went Workspace, by far the biggest one, but also uh, sleeping and food. Um, in the end of this whole version, we will show a more in-detail graph about where everything went. This is just a brief update. And for now, I also want to thank again uh, FAME for making this possible. They gave us this award in the first place. Super grateful for that, because we would never be able to do this without that. So thank you very much. And for now, we'll just keep on developing for the coming six months, uh, every day here. And in the end, we'll share everything online for free with you guys in October. So you can stay tuned on the monthly news or just come back in October to, to see what we've been finalizing, what we've been making. And now for the last part, we have uh, Charlotte bringing you community news from our members around the world. Thank you.
Yo, uh, it's Charlotte and once again I'm going to be bringing you the community news from our wonderful creative community from all around the world. And to kick off the feature I'm going to be talking about a workspace located out in sunny, sunny Brighton. Um, they are called Gomi Design and it's these two guys who have just started making this 100% recycled plastic portable speaker. And a couple features that are really nice about this product is that the plastic is made from plastic bags which currently aren't being recycled in the UK so there's just no use for them and they're just going straight to landfill. Um, and actually the sound insulation is made from recycled denim. It's like a fully recycled product inside and out which is super, super nice. And you can head over to their Instagram page where they are documenting the whole process. You can back them on their Kickstarter or just follow them and just see what they're up to. And next is a workspace. Uh, it's a nearby workspace. It's Precious Plastic Den Haag. Um, they're always a really busy and active workspace. Um, and they've just made this super sweet chair uh, made from recycled plastic beams. Um, so no other materials involved, no wood, no, no steel and just this really wicked one-off piece which looks awesome. Super nice product and yeah, I would love to see more of them. They look really cool. And moving outside of Europe, we have uh, Precious Plastic Kenya who have been super busy and they have been collecting plastic waste which is found on their local beaches and they are recycling it and turning it into these really nice uh, little bat and ball sets. And they all look really different from one another and they're just really, really cool. And it's just really nice because it's this process from finding the plastics on the beach, recycling it, and then turning it back into a product for the beach. It's a kind of like circular process, which is really cool to see. A really, really nice idea. I'd be interested to see how well they work, but I'm sure, I'm sure they're great. <laughs> and moving on from ocean plastic, um, in January, myself, Dave and Jerry, we visited the Maldives to set up a plastic recycling workspace. And Nate and Paul, um, our very lovely version 4 members, are actually there now on a two-month uh, ocean plastic research project. Um, so they're testing the potentials of ocean plastic, how strong is it, how durable is it, what happens if you extrude it, what happens if you bend it. And right now they're making a lot of plastic beams and they're doing different joinery types and they have plans to make pieces of furniture like this lovely little swinging chair that they've made. Um, yeah, and just kind of setting up a whole area um, of products and, and objects that are made from recycled plastic. They're also documenting this super well in the forums, um, so head to their forum page, which will be in the comments below, um, to see what they're up to. And lastly, uh, check out the latest video on the Dave Hackins Community YouTube channel. It's all about uh, powering a shredder using a bicycle. It's a really nice video, it's broken up into four parts. It shows you how to build the frame, how to put in the mechanism and about the cutter. And they basically take it from the start to the finish. So they take you through the whole process. And just amazing to see people using greener source of energy. So good work, guys. And that is it for me this month. Thank you to everybody for watching. Um, and if you're using the machines around the world, use the hashtag Precious Plastic, post in the forums so we can see what you guys are up to. Um, and thank you to all our patron supporters who contribute to the Autistic Project each and every month. Those after months.